Hi everyone, this is Alex from Embertone. Today we're going to be talking about the Herring clarinet. Jose is a composer and a clarinetist, and I don't even remember how we got connected, but what resulted was three weeks of intense sampling. I think it was somewhere along the lines of 4,600 samples that he recorded. And then we got deep into some new technology, and a couple of years later, we come out with the instrument. Uh, let's jump straight in. I think just before you heard me playing Flight of the Bumblebee, so you know that this is an agile instrument, but I just want to show how expressive it can be as well. One thing that I absolutely love about the Herring clarinet is that you're not hearing faux dynamics. You're hearing Jose playing quietly and then Jose playing loudly, and it morphs between those two because the samples are totally lined up in their phases. You'll see right on the main interface, sustain, short, and trill. So sustain mode is what we've been hearing. And the shorts. shorts are fantastic. Eight round robin, two dynamics, and two different lengths of staccato. And then trill mode. These are momentary key switches. So when you press those on touch OSC or when you touch the key switches down here, it's going to be momentary, meaning that the trill happens when you press it and then it goes away when you let go. You can go into trill mode by pressing the interface here. Also, all right, and then there's also reverb and this RR button. RR is round robin. And when you go into round robin mode, there'll be two X round robin. It's not gonna repeat. So when you're not in round robin mode, You hear the same sample over and over again, and then when round robin is on, and then there are four controllable elements on the front page: dynamics, vibrato, flutter, and multiphonics. So dynamics we already talked about. Flutter. And Multiphonics. Two more buttons on the front page, there's solo and mono. So when you press the mono button, it switches to poly mode, and that's where you could play chords. I go back.
back to mono mode. There's also a solo button, and when you press that, it goes into ensemble mode. Ensemble mode is uh, similar to the ensemble mode we have in Free Thunder Violin and Blake's Cello. You can choose the number of players here. You can change a few randomization options, so you have pitch, timing, and then chaos will change the amount of randomization within pitch and timing. And then you could pan the ensemble how you'd like. Um, I generally like to have it really wide panned. But you could also pan it to be uh, in more of a realistic orchestral setting if you have a clear idea about where you want the clarinets to be sitting in your virtual hall. And finally, we have the configure page. And on the configure page, this is where you can get deeper into the control of the instrument. You can change key switches to whatever you want. You could change CC settings to whatever you want. Um, there's a little OSC button. When you click that, it will lock it into touch OSC mode so that it automatically works with the iPad. Uh, there's an unmarked button here that changes the theme, the color theme of the instrument. And then there are just a few more settings here. It's pitch, lag, and trill speed. Trill speed is pretty self-explanatory. When that moves up, When it moves down, actually, it goes faster. And then... and then there's also pitch and lag. These are randomization options that aren't just for the ensemble mode. So if you want the clarinet to be a little bit less predictable in terms of pitch. Let's see. You have to get out of ensemble mode. Yep, there we go. And lag means responsiveness. When it's set to zero lag, that means the instrument will be the natural legato speed that we like. When that moves up, it's going to start chopping the transition sample to make the instrument feel a little bit more responsive. So you'll notice that when the value goes above 50 or so, you're not really hearing the transition anymore, but what you're getting is a slightly more responsive feel. All right, and then there's speed control, tongue samples, and short dynamics. Speed control is uh, the script that we've been working on for months, uh, not months, years. And basically, when you play faster, the transition sample gets crunched down. Um, so the faster you play, the more responsive the instrument gets. The downside of speed control is that requires the entire set of legato transitions to be loaded into RAM. So that's why you see 1.07 gigs. That's all getting loaded into RAM. Uh, when you turn speed control off, you basically purge all those samples and go to a normal set of legatos that don't have that speed control. But you'll notice that they still sound really great. So if you're crunched for RAM, turning speed control off is a really great idea. And finally, tongue samples. Uh, the tongue samples are not loaded by default um, because it's a more specialized method of triggering samples. You'll notice lots of samples here. Um, you're, you're increasing the RAM load of the instrument by five or 600 megabytes by turning the tongue samples on. But what you get are a whole different set of transitions
That's slurred. And that's tongued. Basically, Jose is applying a soft tongue impulse to a new note when you hear those tongue samples. And it's great to change up between those. And the last setting here is short dynamics. When you're in short mode, you could either set uh, the difference in dynamics to CC mode, which it currently is. That means when the uh, CC11 by default goes up, that controls the dynamics. When you click on that, you can set it to velocity. And when you do that, the harder you play on the keyboard, the louder the sample is. And then I think what happens is CC controls speed. Short, longer. I might dig down a little bit deeper and do some specific videos that focus only on a few concepts. But in this one, I just wanted to give everyone a feel for what they could do with the Heron clarinet. And if you have any questions, you are always welcome to send us an email at support at embertone.com. And we thank you for checking this out. Have a great one.